Hi, my name is Dr. Campbell. I am the orchestra director at Cedar Crest High School and also president of PMEA District 7. Welcome to my lecture on the history of the trumpet. I have uh, very vivid memories of one of my first real gigs playing my trumpet. I was still in high school and was asked to play the trumpet part for the trumpet shell sound, which is an area for bass in Handel's Messiah. I had the chance to listen to a cassette tape recording and it sounded like a pretty simple part. I was horrified, however, when the music arrived in the mail. On my B-flat trumpet, it was in the key of E, four sharps, and mostly above the staff. Let me share a picture of the music with you. It's a little bit blurry, but it gets the job done. Notice the tessitura of all of these notes. The F sharp, G sharp, occasionally A sharp, and high B. And it goes up and down between <laughs> those notes quite a lot. It's in the range where you can press down a valve combination and get multiple notes. I did practice the part and learned the part and was ready to go. The concert was on a Saturday evening, right after I had spent the whole day at a PMEA festival, believe it or not, playing third cornet. I did not use my high chops the entire weekend got to the gig and I couldn't play anything above the staff. <laughs> I ended up playing most of the piece down the octave. It was a huge disappointment. On a side note, most of the audience did not know the difference and my reputation was preserved. <laughs> I wondered, how does anybody play this stuff? All right, I'm gonna unshare this picture. Listen, and I'll play the, uh, the opening part for you on my B-flat trumpet. I've got some uh, prepared harpsichord and organ parts um, to go along with my performance. The trumpet shall sound on my uh, trusty Shoki trumpet. probably play that uh, 10 more times and still crack a few of those notes up there in that range. So that experience started my enjoyment of Baroque music. Not too long after my run in with uh, Handel, Wynton Marcellus came out with a CD of the Haydn, Hummel and Leopold Mozart trumpet concertos. He played them on a Shoki E flat trumpet and a piccolo trumpet. I was in love. Here is a picture of that historic album. More time would pass before I could get my hands on the smaller trumpets. And like many of my friends, I struggled trying to play classical and Baroque pieces on B flat trumpet, especially in orchestra. That involved transposing almost all of the music. Good times. <laughs> also, Performing any Baroque or classical repertoire on a B-flat trumpet felt like I was entering a 100-mile bike race on a tricycle. I just didn't have the right equipment. Turns out, the right equipment or the original instrument that this repertoire was written for is the natural trumpet. Let's get out of our picture here, and I'll show you my natural trumpet. All right. This is a natural trumpet. The original form of the instrument. Um, I have, uh, believe it or not, two of these instruments to share with you today. 
I've got a natural trumpet um, that doesn't have any note holes on the yard. And I also have a Baroque trumpet, which does have note holes on the yard. The terms are a little bit interchangeable, um, and it's really an only an important distinction to us historical and righteous trumpet nerds. <laughs> the, uh, the golden age of the trumpet repertoire is, of course, the Baroque period of music history from 1600 to 1750. After 1750, it's a long and complicated story of trumpet guilds or unions and technology that saw the writing of trumpet solos and prominent parts in orchestra um, slowly disappear. Ultimately, the natural trumpet was squeezed out and was replaced by our modern trumpet. The invention of valves resulted in no one continuing the art of learning how to play a natural trumpet or able to play, of course, then the high Baroque music on a modern B-flat trumpet. That was okay for a while, um, but the 20th century saw a revival of playing Baroque music and it was being rediscovered as it was being rediscovered in a church loft somewhere in Europe. Something had to be done to make these high notes accessible again. The 20th century answer to the revival and performance of Baroque music um, was on the piccolo trumpet. Piccolo trumpet is half the size of a B-flat trumpet. It can be pitched in both B-flat and A, and it made the high Baroque trumpet parts playable in an easier key and range. The absolute best piccolo trumpet player of the 20th century was Maurice André, a French trumpeter. And I will share his picture with you next. There's Marie Sandre. He made hundreds of recordings of the Baroque trumpet repertoire. However, I should say that the piccolo trumpet is not easy to play. It has a lot of re resistance and the higher register takes a lot of practice. One of my trumpet teachers had a brick on his desk that had the words piccolo trumpet written on it with a mouthpiece coming out of one end and a plastic bell coming out of the other end. True story. <laughs> for most modern trumpeters, the piccolo trumpet was the solution and the end of the road for performing all the great works of the Baroque period. All right, I'm gonna unshare this picture. Back to our piccolo trumpet. I can very easily play the trumpet shell sound for you on the piccolo trumpet. As I said before, it's instantly in an easier key and range. However, as you look at the music here in a minute, um, it's for trumpet in C or D, which is how most Baroque trumpet music was written. So in order me, for me to play it on a piccolo trumpet, I will have to transpose the notes. Let's look at that music and I'll describe to you the two ways that that will work. Here we see it's written in for C trumpet. So because the piece is in the key of D, um, it's written in the key of D. I also could play this on a D trumpet, and then it would be written in the key of C. And that all really has to do with um, how I'm going to interpret that on my piccolo trumpet, whether in order to play this, I read all the notes in bass clef, or I read all the notes in bass clef and play it up a step. In order to play the piccolo trumpet, um, you have to have these transposing skills because even in our modern day, um, most Baroque music is not written um, in a key that is accessible for a, or that's written specifically for the piccolo trumpet. All right, I'm sharing the music. Um, I can go ahead. I'd like to next um, play the trumpet shell sound for you on the piccolo trumpet.
So, placing all of this in a historical context, let's look at the original instrument again. If you compare the natural trumpet to the modern B-flat trumpet, it should be obvious that no other instrument in the orchestra has changed more over history than the trumpet. Not many trumpet players know about the natural trumpet or have ever really had the chance to play one. Today, it really only performs well with other Baroque instruments or as a solo instrument. Standard pitch was also different during the Baroque time. A equaled 420 instead of our modern 440, so everything was a half a step lower. Importantly, all instruments were made to imitate the human voice. They had a softer quality than our modern instruments. I've always thought about it this way. Playing a piece of Baroque music on a natural trumpet is like cutting down a tree with a saw. Playing a piece of Baroque music on a piccolo or other modern trumpet is like cutting down a tree with a chainsaw. Both get the job done, but with not the same results or finesse. The tone of the natural trumpet has compared to the flute, and it has a much more intimate sound than a modern B-flat trumpet. I will demonstrate that for you in a little bit. Until then, let's get back to the construction. Um, the natural trumpet is between seven and eight feet long in two sections. The first is cylindrical, which is the yards here, and the second is conical, ending in a cone shape or bell shaped flare. Yard pieces are made by taking a flat sheet of brass and bending it around a rod and then soldering it together. The innovation of the Baroque um, was the ability to bend the metal without making a crank. If you've ever taken any piece of metal and just randomly bent it, you're going to find that it doesn't bend in a nice smooth shape. And so really old trumpets were just completely straight. The way that they accomplished this feat was to take a flat sheet or a, a straight yard of, of uh, brass and fill it with liquid lead and then mold it around a form so that there wouldn't be any crinks in it. The other difficult part of making this instrument um, was the bell. The bell was made by taking two sheets of brass and putting them together um, so that they were, they were butterflied together. I actually made this trumpet um, at a camp at Indiana University about 15 years ago, and I spent a whole week in a metal shop learning how to make all the various parts of the, of the horn. So when I got my, uh, my bell put together, it comes out looking like a flat sheet of paper. <laughs> and from there, you have to push it onto a mandal, which is in the form of a bell, and start hammering the bell to spread out the brass so that it eventually forms the shape of a bell. That took a whole day. If I hold this instrument up to the camera for you and get it positioned just right, you can sort of see there on the inside some of the, some of the uh, butterfly seams that I did to make this horn work. There is a ball on this horn which is decorative, and it can be used to uh, hold on to the instrument with one hand. Natural trumpet players would have held on to the instrument with one hand and had their other hand on their shoulder and held the horn up and play. <clears throat> other than soldering the metal together, there are other, no other solder points on this instrument, so you could take the whole thing apart. What really holds it together is this little block of wood that's in the middle. Um, and of course, the yarn that you can wrap around holds it in its shape as well. The Baroque mouthpiece is also quite different from a modern trumpet mouthpiece. It has a completely flat rim. It also has a very shallow cup and a steep bore. Because of that, um, I have a hard time going back and forth between um, my modern trumpet mouthpiece and this Baroque mouthpiece. They just don't really accomplish the same thing. And if I'm going to do any kind of playing on my Baroque trumpet for an extended period of time, I'm not playing my B-flat trumpet at all. The two are, are brothers, but one does not go with the other very well. I've had a good time preparing for this lecture, 
um, trying to be able to play a little bit of Baroque trumpet and a little bit of modern trumpet at the same time. <clears throat> Next, um, because the uh, natural trumpet is twice the length of the B flat trumpet, the harmonic series is also an octave higher. Think of starting on third space C instead of C at the bottom of the staff. From there, you're going to get C, E, G, B flat, and C, like you would on your modern horn, and then every whole step to make a scale up to double high C on your modern trumpet. Let's look at the harmonic series, and I'll be able to then uh, demonstrate each one of the harmonics. I'm going to go back and share my screen. Here is the harmonic series of the natural trumpet. <clears throat> So I'm going to start with uh, number four and play backwards for you from four to three to two. <laughs> number one is the fundamental and cannot be played. All right, if I go back to four, um, there is my C, E, G, B flat, and C. major scale together, you can see that um, harmonic number 11 is listed as an F sharp. It's not really an F sharp or an F and is very hard to play in tune. The A in addition, harmonic number 13 is very problematic as well. Let me play starting at number eight and I will go all the way up to the high C, um, 16. amount of research and science as to how trumpeters performed all of this and still got paid for the gig. How do you play this in tune? Well, I'll boil, it, I'll boil it down to this. There was no equal temperament in the Baroque time, which meant that half steps were not equal. And the imperfections of a natural trumpet did make it a little bit easier to bend the notes with your chops to make the pitches come into tune. All right, I'm going to unshare this picture. <clears throat> Fortunately for us modern performers that want to play, um, there is the Baroque trumpet. And the distinction of this horn is that it has note holes uh, in this, on the side and on the bottom. Much like you would open note holes to play a recorder, right? So when I start opening these note holes, um, I'm instantly going to play these notes a little bit better. I'll get to the camera this way so you can see. Well, <laughs> there we go. So you can see my fingers. And I'll start again on uh, our third space C. So when I lift my thumb off, that gives me the F. I can play my G better in tune with this finger. A is here, B, and C is also better in tune. Yeah, there's a little octave. Um, the articulation is also different on the natural trumpet. Syllables are used um, that emphasize a short and a long attack, or more towards the front of your mouth, and also in the middle or the back. So a regular modern articulation. And a more Baroque approach. Front and back. Um, in addition, almost everything that you play on a Baroque trumpet or a natural trumpet is not slurred. The story of the natural trumpet is also one of privilege. 
Unlike today, where you can sign up and play an instrument in school, trumpet apprentices had to come from a family in good standing and then learn how to play from a trumpet master. By the 1600s, trumpet guilds defined different classes of musicians. It's important to note that almost all professions had the protection of the guild during this time. Trumpeters could be found among town musicians or stadpiper and a knightly class of trumpeters called the Kammerstadt. Much of the writing concerning the various guilds centered around the performance rights and apprentice periods of the musicians. I'll finish my demonstration today um, with the first movement of the concerto in D by Telemann. It's a really tough blow, <laughs> but it will demonstrate the high register of the Baroque trumpet and where you can really hear some of the flute-like quality sounds um, of this instrument. Wish me luck. Shades of red. <clears throat> also, a lot of resistance on this one up in the higher register. Um, this instrument is one of my prized possessions. It's called an Egger, that's the brand. It's handmade in Switzerland. This particular trumpet was made from a historic alloy of brass to imitate the real instrument and not modern brass. Um, it actually plays in four different keys. I can take the instrument apart by taking out the, the lead pipe. So I've got different lead pipes that I can put into the Baroque trumpet to make it play. This will play in modern pitch C and D and also in Baroque pitch C and D. Um, so it's not only the, the lead pipe that you can take out, but I can take the instrument apart this way and substitute um, other crooks to get me uh, a little bit, <laughs> or to get me into a different key. Unlike the the, uh, the handmade instrument where you could actually see um, the seams, you can't see it too much on this one. It really is built really, really well. And of course it has the great garland and, and decoration on it um, that make it a really, really cool instrument. <clears throat> For fun, I also brought one other instrument today to demonstrate. And this is called my Lowe's trumpet. <laughs> Went to Lowe's, got some copper tubing, appropriate for a refrigerator or whatever else you want to build, and then went to Big Lots and got a plastic funnel. And believe it or not, it plays just like a Baroque or a natural trumpet um, because of the harmonic series. <clears throat> Now, this is going to be quite humorous, and I'm going to play it sort of that way. Um, it kind of reminds me of the recordings that you see on uh, YouTube with people playing recorders to uh, music from the Titanic. So just take it with a grain of salt and enjoy. Um, but it is also a good starting point. If you really would like to try to play um, an instrument this way, um, the more tubing that you have, the easier that it is. 
You could, of course, do it on this form by just not pushing down any valves, but because the harmonic series is an octave higher, you really have to get up high before you can build a major scale. And I don't have to get up high at all in order to build my major scale on this, uh, on this Lowe's trumpet. So here's the same beautiful Telemann concerto that I just played, only on my Lowe's trumpet. And this trumpet's in a different key, so I'm going to have to transpose it. Transpose the keyboard, that is. All right, here we go. Enough of that. I really hope you have enjoyed my uh, lecture on the natural and the Baroque trumpet today. If you would have any other questions about how this instrument works or some of the other instruments that um, came in between the Baroque trumpet and the modern B flat trumpet, such as the keyed bugle, which were the instruments that were used to play the Haydn and the Hummel trumpet concertos, um, I could fill your ears for days about all these things. Um, feel free to contact me at my school email. Thank you very much, and I hope I'll see all of you soon. <laughs>